Hey sis, hey, welcome to Empower Her Series. It's your girl Nana, and this is show we educate to elevate. Today's words read, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Matthew 6, 33. Welcome back to another episode of Empower Her Series. Today I have with me Dr. Jenna and Hi. And our topic today is about being a doctor, wife, and mother. Dr. Entry, if you were in an elevator with Joe Metal, how would you describe yourself? I would tell him that I'm Dr. Jenna Entry, AKA Dr. J. I teach at Ohio Dominican University as a chemistry professor. I'm married to a handsome man Ooh, with two beautiful girls. <laughs> And I sing in the choir at church, Joe. Maybe you can try my voice and see if I can be your backup. A background <laughs> single. <laughs> so today we are going to be making breakfast burrito. And she's going to actually be teaching me how to make it because I've never made one. We have our ingredients. We have like the bell pepper. We have the smoked sausage, the onions. We have um, eggs. That's about to come up real quick. We have the wrap. We have the lettuce and the salsa. We're going to show you guys how we're doing it. She's actually teaching me so you can learn from what I'm learning. <laughs> it's really easy. Okay. Who is Janet? Well, as I said briefly, um, basically, I am a Ghanaian woman. I was born in Ghana, moved to the US, you know, to start high school. And I used to live in the Bronx, New York. Really? Yeah, so that's where I went to high school. And then I went to Binghamton University in New York, got my undergrad, I majored in chemistry. Wow. Yeah, so we got my bachelor's in chemistry and then I moved to Ohio to do my PhD. Um, so I did oh, my PhD at the Ohio State. So how long have you been in Ohio then? I moved here in 2011, actually. Okay. Um, August 2011, I remember I graduated in May and I moved here in August. Packed my bags, left my family in New York and I moved here because I really wanted to go to Ohio State. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> So at OSU, I got my PhD in medicinal chemistry mm -hmm. from the College of Pharmacy. So basically, um, I studied how to do drug discovery. Mm -hmm. um, and then after I graduated in 2017, I um, took a job as a faculty member at Ohio Dominican University, where I'm currently a chemistry professor there. Mm. Yeah, and I'm married. I got married. <laughs> While I was in graduate school, Ooh. I met, you know, we'll talk about that, but you know, I'm married. The wind up the <laughs> I'm married with two beautiful daughters right now, so yeah, that's me. So, with like everything you've told me so far, like, how did you become who you are now? Like, what steps did you take to become the doctor, the, um, the wife? Um, it's your journey to becoming who you are. Well, so while I was in high school, right, I, um, when I was a child, my first subject was math. <laughs> in Ghana, I wanted to be an accountant or whatever, because <laughs> I knew math and I said, oh, math, what can I do with math? Let me be an accountant. Mm -hmm. And then when I came to the U.S., you know, in high school, I took a chemistry class and I really, really enjoyed it. Um... And I was like, wow, I like, you know, when we go to lab, I'm so excited. And I like mixing stuff. I like mixing That's my stuff. only favorite part of chemistry. <laughs> we get to go to the lab. But yeah. in the classroom, oh my gosh, no. Yes. So <laughs> I like the class, and then I also enjoy the lab. So okay. um, that's where, you know, my interest in chemistry started from high school. And I was okay. like, what do you do with chemistry, you know? Yeah. Um, so I talked to a few people. I am always, you know, the type that asks a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. Me too. But I'm, I don't like to be lost or yeah. I don't like to not know, you know, yep. things. So if I'm confused and I, I look it up and I can't find it, I'll always ask somebody. Mm -hmm. So I will talk to my teachers at high school, you know, about what I do. And for a while, I was, you know, thinking about going to medical school, right? Mm -hmm. 
So then when I was in high school, I did a program to shadow medical doctors, you know, try to learn what it is to go to med school and all of that. And I realized, I saw a cadaver, cadaver, like a dead person that they operate to do, oh, okay. to do the studies and all that. <laughs> and I was like, um, I don't know if I can stand the smell or be around dead people because, no. you know, that's not my thing. So I knew I like chemicals, but yeah. maybe not so much people, working on people. Yeah. Um, so I didn't want to be a medical doctor. I made my decision in high mm -hmm. school. Then I wanted to do a pharmacy, pharmacist. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then, you know, I shadowed a pharmacist and I said, no, this is not for me either. Mm -hmm. So then I decided to go into like PhD. PhD, what it does is allow you to be independent. You study something that you're passionate about. Yeah. And I knew that I like drugs and how you synthesize drugs and things like that. Mm -hmm. So basically, that's why I went to get my PhD instead of like my MD or PharmD. Okay. And I became, you know, I got my PhD so that I can do, you know, research, yeah. go in the lab, do what I like to do, things like that. Okay. So everything that um you said is kind of ins aspiring to me like ins okay not aspiring because i said aspire a lot inspiring to me because when i was deciding what to study in um college it was like one way street for me because i have never there was there wasn't any female black female that came to our school to be like oh you can be this you can do this you can do that yeah. so it was a struggle to find like what route i wanted to take my parents suggested pharmacy I was like, okay cool because i was good at chemistry in high school in high school i was good at chemistry in high school in college it was not the same so they suggested to me um uh pharmacists and all these things i was like no i shot a pharmacist I was like this is boring all i do is give up medicine i don't want to do that right, right, right. <laughs> i mean i know that's Same more to, i mean of course yeah there's more to course, pharmacists course, than that course, but i was like of course and there are different boring. kinds of pharmacy yeah pharmacists you know yeah maybe you shadowed the retail pharmacy yeah you know? but sometimes they work at the hospital and you do more it depends yeah. what field you are so. i mean I, I asked some questions but it's still i was like i'm not it's interested not in of course. it's not for me so then when i was going to um college my major that I had um, that I started with is electrical engineering okay. because I wanted to do something different. I wanted to make, I wanted to like show the world that I can be something else because I, I had never, I have never seen a black woman in the engineering field. Like it's a male dominant field, yes, let, let alone be black as well. Like I, there was nothing like that to me. So once I found that, and I was like, let's go for it, let's show this where I can do it. But the downside was that. Since like engineering was like a male dominant field in high school, I wasn't taught engineering. Right. That was in the extra curriculum or whatever for me. So I didn't know nothing about engineering. I was like, I was being so ambitious, like let's go for it. I can do it. Yeah. Four years back, like <laughs> come on. So then in my classes, I realized that when the teachers were teaching us, they would do it more of like um, what you already know, because most of the men, I was the only female in my engineering classes. Most of the men will um, know already what he's talking about because they took like Java or Python, something in high school. So yeah. once the professor brought up a topic, they're like, oh yeah, I got it. But I'm just like, hold on, go back to one plus one. Go back to one plus one. <laughs> like what just happened? So I was lost. And apart from, I mean, I made it all the way through three years for engineering. And apart from that, um, being class full of like I didn't have I wasn't buddy buddy with any of the male yeah. um any yeah. of my male um peers because they were like they would play soccer together or they would play baseball yeah. together so they were in the clique on themselves so when the professor would be like okay work in your team I'm like who <laughs> <laughs> who do I have I choose exactly and the school also went to like engineering was a new field so like tutoring was like they were, they were lacking tutoring and stuff like so I was really struggling. What school was that? My friend and I was in university. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a new so program now. Weird. I mean, now it's like it's way more advanced than when I started. Right. So there was a lot of like things that brought me down, and I was like, okay, it's okay. Maybe I shouldn't like um, major in electrical engineering, but I can still be in a STEM field. And when I was majoring in electrical engineering, I did um, my minor in mathematics. So I was like, okay, let's just flip it. Like I like math, like when you said I like math as well. Like when I understand it, it's so fun and yeah, like yeah. I like let's keep on going. But when I, I like don't... math until a point. I don't like math anymore. <laughs> I switched to chemistry. 
<laughs> like really? simple math now. Yeah, algebra is my favorite. Algebra, yeah. I give it to you like, yeah. pop, 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 yeah. like yeah. done. After I took count <laughs> too, I said no more math. So <laughs> really? Like, yeah. Dang. I, t I'm, I finished Calc 1, 2, and 3, and now I'm like doing advanced because whatever, because I'm the math major now. Right. So. Mm, Yikes. No. But, no <laughs> so like, like math, like if I understand it's easy for me, it's like, okay, let me just do that. I'm gonna do math major, electrical engineering minor since I've taken so many classes. So mm -hmm. right now that's what I'm doing. And since like the, like when you go back to like how I even got into the major is because there was a lack of, um, how do I say representation in that field? Like there was yeah. no one to be like, while, while I was like 16, 17, 18, no one told me that, oh, you can do this because I did it. There wasn't any example, example mentor, to follow. Mentor, somebody that Exa could mentor Yeah, you. and like every, my dad brought me like so many like in electrical engineering um, peers that he had that I could talk to, but it was yeah, all older men. Older men, <laughs> it's like, I can't relate to you. Yes, I, it just, yes. I wish I could, but I can't. But yes. so like, with you being in a STEM major and actually finishing and doing your PhD, like yeah. somebody watching this who wants to be like you is going to take you as an example, as a role model. Yeah, she did this, so I can do it. Yeah. Like if I had known her earlier, I would have like, <laughs> you know, she, like, listen, I'm going through this. So like, what's going I'm on? Like, you can do it. <laughs> you got this. You're right. It's not very uh, common. Yeah. But um, I, I was the only Ghanaian. Mm -hmm doing this for a long time right. so when i came to osu i met a couple of Ghanaians who were doing because OSU, osu is a big school yeah but even then the percentages of black females getting phds is very mm. small especially getting phd in stem field yeah it's like as you go up it's like all african american all black people yeah. africans african -American, it's like less than two percent so when you go to conferences, you don't see people. Sometimes you'll be in a room and it's just you with your color. In my department right now, I'm the only one with my Stand color. Stand out. Yeah, Stand because out. it's not, you, I don't know why, but you're right. There's no representation and there's no one to mentor us, but you really have to want it to, yeah. to motivate yourself. Sometimes yeah. you're alone, Yeah. but you, if you really want to do something, it's good to find a mentor, but if you don't, you can still motivate yourself or look at other people, you know, yeah. and it's, it's difficult, but you know, I push through it. It's not easy, mm -hmm. but you have to be determined so you can go through it and, you know, like, get it. Can you go a little bit more in depth about like, an advice you would give to like the 16 year old, 17 year old, 18 year old, um, black girl watching and saying, I want to be like her, I want to be. I want to be in the STEM field, I want mm -hmm. to go further, and what advice would you give them? Honestly, I would say that you have to be determined. You have to work hard. You can't get to, you know, do the non-traditional things and be mm -hmm. lazy. Yeah. Because some things, you know, some career paths are straightforward, you know, A, B, C, and D. But with PhD and, you know, STEM majors, sometimes it's very hard to define exactly what I want to do with my yeah. STEM major. If you don't go to professional school, if you don't go to medical school, you know, pharmacy school, nursing school, PA school, those kind of things, and you want to do a non-traditional route like I chose, you have to be determined. You can't give up. And find someone, whether or not they're your skin color, whether or not they're... You can, sometimes you can't relate to them, but you can learn a thing or two. So yeah. like I said earlier, I like to ask questions. So I'll ask somebody, you know, somebody in PhD, what, how, is it, how is it being a PhD student? What is the commitment? That way you're prepared yeah. before you get into it. And also you have to do um, internships. When I was an undergrad, I started doing undergraduate research. Mm -hmm. Just so that I'll know, because PhD is a lot of research. Mm -hmm. So I tried it out in undergrad to see when I what you want to get. So I, I went to when you're undergrad, people are not so hard on you. People will teach you a lot of things. Okay. So I joined a lab in undergrad. I learned how to do you know synthesis and chemistry and things like that, and that got me interested. So do an internship, find a mentor if you can. Um, ask questions. People don't ask questions. People like to keep to themselves. I will knock on your door if I have to. 
Like if I have a professor that I really like, my organic chemistry professor in undergrad. Yeah. I really liked her, okay. and so she wrote me a recommendation letter when I was applying for my um, my graduate school. So she was, you know, Caucasian, but she made me so interested in chemistry because she was a good teacher. So I became her friend. Mm -hmm. I would talk to her, and she advised me and it helped. So ask questions. Don't be afraid. Um, don't stay lost. Ask questions. If you ask one person, you don't get the answer you like. Ask another person. If you don't get the answer, ask another person. But don't be quiet and don't be lost. Okay. So just be determined. If that's what you want to do, no matter how the lack of example it is out there, just keep going. Ask yeah. questions. Put yourself out there. And learn more. Yeah. Don't be lazy. Is one mm -hmm. thing she said that stuck out to me. Because my <laughs> going to college, like I was, I was a bit lazy. I was like, oh, this is easy. Because in high school it was so easy it was for so me. Easy. High, high school was like a like joke. the little. <laughs> I it's know. a job like they literally spoon feed you everything yeah, so yeah, in college yeah. i was like oh i got this yeah. and the gap like, is really wide between um high school science yeah. and college science. oh yeah like it's i said so wide. i was i loved chemistry in, in high school like yeah. i love I, I was an ac in, in like chemistry and i come to um yep. college i'm like what yeah what i get that a lot because i teach first years okay and so they come, they come straight from high school mm -hmm. to general chemistry class and some of them have taken chemistry, but yeah. you know, in the first semester, a lot, it's a learning curve for mm -hmm. a lot of people because when you go to college, we just give you the textbook. Yeah, we tell you, we give you syllabus, we tell you chapters. When we, when the professor comes, we lecture for what 40, 45 minutes. Yeah, but then you're gone on your yeah. own and it's a lot of you have to teach it to yourself yeah for high school you're taught everything that you yeah. need to know about college here's the book we'll go over a few examples but you go home and you do the rest because you're in class for one yeah. hour and so then the rest you have to do at home so it's a lot of self-discipline and a lot of freshmen are still chilling <laughs> <laughs> okay so dr janet so like while you were speaking, you mentioned about you got married during your graduate study. Mm -hmm. Can you go more in depth about that? How you, how you decide to be a wife while studying the hardest thing on earth? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> <laughs> well, so when I moved to Ohio, right, in 2011, I joined, you know, the Church of Pentecost, PIWC Pentecost in Columbus. So I, that's where I started fellowshipping. Mm -hmm. So I saw a guy there, or he saw me there. <laughs> and you know, we became friends right away, you know. And I was in school. So one thing I believe is that you can't really plan your life like, I'm gonna do this first, yeah. and do this second, yeah. and do this third, and do this fourth, you know? When life happens, you let life happen. You need somebody, you need somebody. It doesn't matter what time. So I had just started graduate school and I met my husband and we became friends. So while I was in graduate school, my second year, we got engaged. And then my third year, we got married. So I married year three of my graduate school the hardest year the hardest year but i waited to so when you do phd your first two years you do your masters because you go straight from bachelor's to phd so first two years is like masters when you finish your two years you have to take an exam and then when you pass that exam then you continue with the phd so four years phd is five years oh really yeah I didn't know that. so two years is masters and then three years for the actual phd okay so it's five years so after two years, you take an exam, you pass, and then you continue to um, um, oh, okay. you continue um, to your PhD. So I made sure I passed that exam, and I made sure that I was in the PhD first mm -hmm, before. before. So I, I I finished what we call the candidacy. I finished my candidacy before I got married, because um, at that point, there's nothing that would really kick you off the program unless you're lazy and you don't do your job mm -hmm. so i crossed a big milestone before i got married though and then i got married year three and i got pregnant three months after that so i was pregnant in graduate school as well i had my first daughter in grad school as well 
Wow. <laughs> yep. So life happens. Wow. It was tough. Uh, I'm not kidding. It was really, really hard though. At nights, I'm so sleepy. When you're pregnant, you're sleepy a lot. You have to read a paper. You have to write a paper. Mm -hmm. um, I'm up, you know, I'm falling asleep. Wow. Great. <laughs> you did good. Your first rap. Good job. <laughs> yeah, so it, it was hard, but I have a very supportive husband. Keyword. So, Supportive. Because I was going to ask you, like, very the responsibilities that come with being a wife. Yeah. How do you maintain being a wife mm. and studying yeah. late nights? Like, end up pregnant. Like, yep. Yep. if you don't have a supportive husband, you just can't do it, basically. <laughs> so, basically, sometimes, you know, I don't, I can't cook because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm tired or oh, I'm sleepy or oh, I have to, I'm overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. He understands. He's not like, hey, where's my dinner? Oh. or something like that yeah. we'll probably pick up something or he'll make something quick for us to eat um oh yeah and then sometimes you know when the baby came to you watch the baby if i have to watch if i have to do something so you have to be on the same page right um so it helps a lot you can't, it's really hard if you if you don't have the support but when i have my daughter my mom also came to help me for okay. like the first five months when it's really crazy because I was still in school mm -hmm. so my mom helped me um, take care of the baby because my husband works full-time and I work full-time so we had help with the baby so that I can focus and finish my degree so I finished before I had the second one though so right now you are a doctor you teach chemistry yes. at um Ohio Dominican, Ohio Dominican. Yep. she's a chemistry major if you, if you have her you're lucky if you have her honestly like if I had you I'm like <laughs> Thank you, buddy, buddy, best friend. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> but okay, so right now you are um, a chemistry yes. professor mm -hmm. with your doctorate. You yeah. are married with yes. two kids. Yes. What is a day in life like on, <laughs> for you? Like that is so much to juggle. Well, a day in the life starts very early and it ends very late. <laughs> Because, you know, you lose a lot of sleep. Like right now, I don't know if you can tell, makeup probably, you can't tell, but I'm sleep deprived. You don't sleep eight hours anymore. Um, that's what it comes with. I used to sleep eight, ten hours a day. I don't anymore. I'm lucky if I get four hours. I'm lucky what? if I get five hours. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's oh, a man. Lot. <laughs> <laughs> you start early um, in the morning, get Lisa ready for school. Lisa, she's the first, daughter. yeah, she's my first, you know, get her ready for school. <laughs> Good job. Your yeah. burrito is looking <laughs> very great. In fact, it looks better than mine. Oh, no, you're better than me. <laughs> I guess I'm talking, so I'm not putting effort into rapping my mind. Oh. But yeah, so it's not fairly. Lisa has to go to school. My husband goes to work. He'll drop mm -hmm. Lisa off to go to work. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't work last semester because I just had my baby in August. Yeah. So last semester I was off, so I'll be home with the baby. Yeah. Um, so the real life with two kids is about to start mm -hmm. this semester because mm -hmm. now I'm going back to work full time so um we get ready in the morning we leave for work grandma will watch the baby while we're gone and then when we come back you, bu you back you make dinner you eat you get the girl ready to go to bed mm -hmm. bathe lisa bathe the little one get ready mm -hmm. to go to bed you, i don't know it's just go 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 <laughs> wow, wow it doesn't sound impossible it just sounds it's a not, lot yeah it's but, lot it's to do, but it's possible yes, like, obviously. And it's not for forever either. They're going to grow no, up and be helpful exactly. in other ways too. So. Yeah, I'm wow. so happy. Lisa's four. So now if you pick out her clothes, she can put it on herself. Okay. And she's starting to do a lot of things herself. So it helps. Um, yeah. Okay. That's really cool. Thank you so much for like going in depth about your personal life and just teaching us so much about yourself. But before we go, is there any like any last minute things you want to say that you think I forgot to ask or you forgot yeah. to mention? The, the yes, of course. Mm -hmm. um, the last minute thing I'll say that with God, all these things will be impossible. Honestly, mm -hmm. I think God gives you the grace to be able to do the different things yeah. that you do because he's given us the talents. He wants yeah. us to use it. And so he gives us the wisdom to use it. So God is in the mix of all of us. Right. I would not take the credit 
even how I, I got my job, it was a testimony. You know, when you major in chemistry, everybody's like, oh, you're not going to get a job. Right. But the steps of the righteous is ordered by God. Amen. So you have to put that first. Right. Um, for me, that's my secret. Mm -hmm. You know, you seek God first, everything else will fall into place. I don't really plan. I never said, oh, I'll get married third year in my graduate school, or I'll have a kid when I'm this age. Mm -hmm. I don't plan that kind of thing. I just talk to God about it. I'm like, God bless me with a good husband. God bless me with good children. I pray about it, and I let God figure it out for me. So to be honest, God, without God, I feel like, I wouldn't be able to do all of these things right. well and do it well. Mm -hmm. By God's grace, I'm a good mom, a good mm -hmm. wife, I'm a professor, you know, I get good reviews. So you don't just do it anyhow. Mm -hmm. With God, you do it and do it well. And you hear the feedback from people and I thank God for, you know, how far he's brought me and where he's going to take me. I think this is just the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, so I thank God for everything. The secret recipe is God. Yes. Period. Point blank. Yes. <laughs> Dot. <laughs> Done. Done. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, you guys. That is all we have for you today about being a doctor, a wife, and a mother. <laughs> how she balances everything and with God's help, like she's just doing good at what she does. So, this is it for today. And before I exit out. I just want to say thank you guys for tuning in for everything you've watched so far. It means so much to me and I hope what I say is like, or what like my guests have to bring is touching and empowering to you. Like this, my, I just want to make sure you guys are... <laughs> You're doing a good job. Thank you. you <laughs> thank you. Keep it up. Keep thank it up. you. Like this, I hope it's wisdom impact and knowledge impact and you learn a lot from it. And I learned a lot from her. Like to be determined, don't be lazy. Get don't your get get stuff done. Like yes. make sure you don't make sure you include God. Like yes. and everything. And That's before I go, um, if you like to be featured on my show about any topic that you believe should be on this series, please let me know, mm -hmm. and we'll definitely make it um make it happen. Thanks for having me. Oh, thanks for coming. <laughs> All right, you guys. I'll see you next Wednesday. Bye. Bye.